Well, good morning and welcome to you once again. Um, I'm coming to you live from the Isle of Wight. Um, for those of you that don't know, the Isle of Wight is a small island off of the south coast of England, so that's where the Isle of Wight is. Um, there's lots of people tuning in that have not been on before. Uh, and so that's where I am. I'm on the Isle of Wight. My name's Christopher Cass and uh, welcome to the programme. Uh, you're most welcome wherever you are around the world as you join me uh, for today's live broadcast. Um, a little bit windy where I am. I've tried to take measures to stop the wind noise on the broadcast, so I hope that's not too bad. Um, but um, anyway, just, so do um, let me know if you can hear okay. Um, it should be all right. I've done something here that hopefully will help that. But um, how's the sound anyway? Somebody tell me that would be good. But truly welcome to every one of you as you join today. Um, it's just been so wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I know nothing greater than Jesus. And um, we could spend our entire lifetime talking about Jesus and really not even scratch the surface of what there is to know um, about him and his glory and who he is. That's what I like about our faith. It's dynamic, it's living, it's alive, that we interact, we encounter our God. Amen. So, um, anyway, thank you, Samantha, for that. Sounds good. Right, okie dokie. Let me just welcome some people to the program as well. I can see a few people joining in. Lisa, good morning. Uh, Naveen Batula in India, welcome to you. Helene in Canada, welcome to you. Sarah, hi to you. Samantha, Welcome to you. Isle of Wight, just so you know, uh, this is how you spell Isle of Wight. I'll put it on the screen. Because often people think this, right? And um, cause then if you look on a map, you'll actually find it. <laughs> right. There. That's how you spell Isle of Wight. Um, unusual spelling, very different. Most people think it's white like the colour. But um, no, that's how you spell Isle of Wight. So there you go. Good morning to you, uh, Hiwatwaku in uh, Ethiopia, I believe. God bless you. Susan Sadler, welcome to you. Um, Samantha, I've already said. So, um, you know, welcome to the broadcast. I was thinking about things and praying about things and all this kind of thing. And, um, you know, more and more and more and more, I'm always drawn to just a simple thing of keep, Focusing on Jesus. Now that might sound straightforward to you. You might think, well, surely that's obvious, but really it isn't with a lot of people. And I want to encourage you with that. As you look at Jesus, as you look at him and you encounter him, oh, you're going to meet some incredibly powerful um, revelation, understanding, meeting with God, meeting with Jesus, meeting the Holy Spirit. It's the most fulfilling, incredible thing that can ever happen to you in your whole life. And so I want to encourage you in all of that to seek uh, God, seek revelation, seek Jesus. All the answers that you're looking for are in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells me that all wisdom and knowledge is in Christ Jesus. You might want to get to know him then. <laughs> All wisdom and knowledge is in him. Well, that'd be a good person to get to know, wouldn't it? If you want to understand some things, like the Bible says, he or she that lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and he'll help you. The Holy Spirit has been sent to the earth to magnify Jesus Christ. That's why he has been, that's why he has been sent. Jesus said, I will send another to you. He will be your counsellor. He will be your guide. He will take the things of mine and he will make them known to you. And, uh, you know, these foundational truths about the cross of Jesus Christ. What is its meaning? What is its power? What is that for? The blood of Jesus Christ. What is the implication of his holy blood being shed on behalf of sinful humanity? What does that really mean? 
What life-changing power and transformation and revelation can come to me and you as we gaze upon Jesus, as we look into Jesus, as we ask the Spirit of Almighty God, the mighty Holy Spirit, to reveal Jesus Christ to us. You know, what, what will happen to you as you begin to look at Jesus? Um, we once did a... Um, a whole series of um, talks and ministry and stuff like that. And I called it Aspects of Jesus. And I used the illustration of a, of a large diamond, and I had a spinning picture of a diamond. And, and when you hold a big diamond to the light, not that I've ever had one, but it, a big gem like that, it, as you turn it, a cut diamond, the light shines through all the cuts and facets on the diamond, and light is illuminated around. And as you turn it, it's ever-changing. The colours are ever-changing. It's like that with Jesus. The more you look at Jesus, the more you'll see. The more time you spend with him, the more revelation, life and understanding will come to you. And so the greatest message that you can ever hear is Jesus. is the Son of God. Because he is the one that gives you the ability to connect to heaven itself, to the presence of God, to the power of God, to the throne of God. And so the more you look at Jesus, the more revelation and understanding you will have as you gaze upon Jesus Christ. As you ask the Spirit of God to illuminate to you the mighty Son of God. I pray that God would reveal to us the power of the crucifixion, the power of the cross, the power of the blood that Jesus Christ shed on our behalf, the power of his mighty resurrection from the dead. Oh, glory. Lord, I pray you would take these truths and reveal them to us. Because truly there is power in the name of Jesus. What an incredible, um, I don't know what the word is, privilege has been given to the church, the body of Christ on the earth, to be able to exercise and use the mighty power of heaven for the sake of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, do we understand today the power that's in the name of Jesus, that when you begin to speak that holy name, Jesus, Yeshua, when you begin to speak that name, what, are you ha what is happening when you begin to enunciate the name of Jesus? Now, the Bible tells us that he has the name that is above every other name. And through the life of Jesus Christ, you can connect to everything in heaven. The, the seat of the universe, the government of all un the universe, is the throne of God himself. And Jesus, he is at the right hand of God the Father on the throne, and he connects you to God. Colossians 3, 3 says this, My life is hidden in Christ, in God. So you have a divine place next to Father in Jesus. Work that one out. But you start reading the scripture, you begin to understand that Jesus has accredited you. Jesus has authorized you. Jesus has given you a place before the throne of Almighty God. And that is why when we tell people about Jesus, when we begin to pray in his name, then all of a sudden supernatural miracle working power can break forth in that situation because we are connected to God. We're connected to Je through Jesus to the presence of the power of God. I said it last night, but I'll say it again. And don't forget, we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus himself, he connects you to all of that. Oh, that's something to shout about, isn't it? Hallelujah. He connects you to the very person of God himself. 
and all of the blessings that that contains. So when I begin to pray, when I begin to call upon God, the power of God can be released into the earth because I'm connected to heaven. I'm not alone. I'm connected to God himself in heaven through Jesus Christ. And when I begin to speak, when I begin to pray, when I begin to release the word of God, the Holy Spirit will confirm that holy word and release supernatural power into the situation. And so truly, there is power in the name of Jesus. When you begin to speak that name, don't forget when the disciples began to preach in Jerusalem, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, the, the prevailing religious crowd at the time, they dragged them in and threatened them because they were um, not purposefully in a sense, but they were threatening their religious um, prestige, authority and place. And what did they say to them? It's really interesting. They said to them, you are to stop teaching and preaching in this name. And they threatened the apostles, Peter, James and John and the gang. They threatened them and said, do not preach or teach anymore in this name. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? The name of Jesus. They could have talked about anything else. Don't speak or preach or teach in this name. When the man from the gate beautiful of Acts chapter 3 was brought before the Sanhedrin, and they, they knew all about this, they said, by what power or what name have you done this? How have you done this? How have you caused a man whom we all know to be crippled, we would see him when we were going in and out of the temple. We know who this man is. How has he been healed? What did you do? What name did you come in? What authority did you release to cause this to happen? And it's interesting as well that the Sanhedrin confer amongst themselves and they said, all of Jerusalem knows the mighty miracle that has been done. We can't even deny it. I don't know why you'd want to. Sorry about that. I've just realised I've got my volume on the phone here. I must turn this down right now because otherwise, you know it, somebody will ring me. I guarantee you they will ring me. <laughs> and interrupt the broadcast, so sorry about that. But see, that was what they were saying though, weren't they? The Sanhedrin were asking the apostles, <coughs> how did you work this miracle? What name were you coming in to do this thing? How did you do this? And also, interestingly enough, they tried to forbid them from doing this such a thing. Well, when you begin to look at those things, you begin to get an understanding and begin to realise that there is mighty power in the name of Jesus. Because what happens is, when you come in his, his name, when you begin to speak in his name, you are being connected to the very person of Jesus himself, and it's like he is now coming because you're calling his name, you're invoking the power of God, you're speaking about Jesus, that the Spirit of God himself comes to confirm those words. And that's how we can pray, that's how I can speak a word from here, um, sat in the countryside on the Isle of Wight, and the power of God can hit you right where you are in another country. Because truly, there is power in the name of Jesus, there's power in the word of God, and the Holy Spirit, he is omnipresent, and that means he is everywhere at once, and he will confirm that word right where you are. Whether you're in England, whether you're in Ethiopia watching me today, whether you're in Africa somewhere, in a country like one of those countries there, uh, whether you're in India, uh, whether you're in Canada, North America, wherever you happen to be today, the, the power of, of, of God can come. The power can come because the word of God is spoken and the Holy Spirit will confirm that word wherever, however, around the world. And one of the reasons that the Spirit of God wants you to hear and see these words is so that you will have a confidence that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the Word of God and mighty breakthroughs come when we begin to lift up Jesus Christ. 
Oh, friends, we don't need a new message. We need to preach the right message, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, crucified, but resurrected and glorified as we lift up King Jesus. I tell you what, the power and the fire and the anointing and the glory of God will come. Some of you right now, you're beginning to feel the power of God as I lift up Jesus Christ in this place because I know there is power in the name of Jesus. Mighty, life-changing, nation-changing, miracle-working power in the name and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many of you are looking for a special preacher or somebody to come to your place. But Jesus would say to you, speak my word, lift me up before all men and I will draw them unto myself. Wherever you are, whatever nation you're in, whatever your background, friend, it doesn't matter. Moses went to Egypt with a stick in his hand and he was 80 years old. His brother was 83. They went to Egypt with a stick. Ah, but what was the other thing they had? God was with them. Oh, that we would develop a sense of understanding that God himself stands with us, ready to perform and confirm the word of God. Oh, Lord, open their eyes, I pray. Open my eyes to how much you are with us, how much you will confirm your holy word, how much you will confirm, Father God from heaven, the truth about your Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Savior of the world, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, blaze it into the spirit of every man, every woman, and every child that would hear my voice on this video. May you know the resurrected Son of the living God, Jesus Christ, is your Savior, is the King of glory. Is the soon coming king. Is the one that can heal you and set you free and break you out of bondage that you've been in. Lord, take my words and anoint them with power. Anoint them with your fire today. Touch your people, Lord. Touch every person watching this live right now or even watching the recording. I pray for you, dear friend, that the fire of God would come upon you. The love of God would surround you. Chains would break off of your life. For truly there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. And my prayer is for the whole body of Christ, every dear brother and sister all around the world to be filled with power from on high so we can proclaim Jesus Christ as the Son of God to the nations of the world, to every tribe and every tongue and every nation and every people group. Oh! Glory, Lord, touch your people. Fill them to overflowing today. May the fire of revival blaze in your life, blaze in your heart, blaze in your community. Because revival is the mighty spirit of God coming down like a mighty rushing wind and filling you with power from on high, filling you with revelation, confirming the word of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty. Touch your people all around the world. Spirit of God, I pray, fall afresh. We ask for your fire to fall in the nations of the world. Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Oh, friend. I pray that Jesus is so revealed to you that so much of the magnificence of Jesus Christ will burst upon your heart and mind as a revelation from God. That you would see him transcendent, risen, glorified. Oh, Lord, pour out your spirit. As Stevie Mansfield said, outpourings, Lord, all around the world. Touch them with your fire, Lord. 
you're listening to me now and you've got pain in your hand or your wrist, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of his name, be loosed from your pain now in the name of Jesus, right now. Remember, friends, share this broadcast. People need to hear about the power of God and the fire of the gospel. We need to break through in the nations of the world. The Holy Spirit said to me recently, I am pouring out a fresh anointing for the gospel to penetrate the nations of the world. There's something the Spirit of God is doing. This great end time harvest must come in before the coming of the great Son of Man is again, before the great and final coming of Jesus Christ again to the earth. There has to be a great harvest. He will come again and we must Get on with the job that we've been given. But for that job to be successful, for our mission on the earth to preach this gospel of the kingdom and for that kingdom to expand all around, we need to be filled with the person and the power of the mighty Holy Spirit of the living God so we can glorify Jesus Christ in the nations of the world. And I pray for you today that God himself will set you ablaze. He will focus your heart, focus your mind and show you the truth and the power of almighty God this day and every day. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, thank you for your presence right now. I pray that you would empower and envision people today, wherever you are watching this program, that the power of God will envision you. Thank you, Jesus. Touch your people right now. Whatever you need from God today, I pray for you right now that the power of Almighty God will touch you right now. Sarah Towers, I pray that the power of God will re release you from feeling sick and anxious today, right now, in the name of Jesus. And everybody just uh, join with me and pray for Sarah now. Because you see, as we come together and as we pray, great and mighty power is released I I into the atmosphere and touches people. And your prayers, uh, uh, combined with my prayers, touching together, brings healing and relief to people uh, as, uh, as we pray. And every time we come together, people get healed, people get touched by God, as we, the body of Christ, come together and we loose the power of God that has been entrusted to us intentionally, on purpose, with purpose, to whatever situation needs God's grace to come into it. You see, you've got to be intentional in these things. You've got to be deliberate in these things. <laughs> Amen. Trying to rain a little bit here, but it's not going to do it. It's a lovely uh, place here today. Uh, you can see the field there. Look at that. Oh, there's lots and lots of flowers in the field there. Wildflowers, other things. Um, just truly a magnificent uh, place where I am today. Amen. And so... At least because I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> Amen. But you see, as we pray, the power of God comes. As we pray, healing takes place. As we pray, lives are changed. Don't think God is not concerned about you because he is. He's so concerned about you that he nailed his own son to a cross. He allowed him to be nailed to that cross and Jesus willingly submitted to that being done to him so that God could once again reach humanity legally. Now that's love, isn't it? For God, John 3.16, many of you will know this passage of scripture, but I don't know, have we really caught what's being said? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son 
Did you catch that today? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whomever might believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, wonderful Jesus. That is God's love for you. And oftentimes, uh, if people think, you know, does God love to me? I would say, dear friend, look at the cross. Does he love you? Do you love somebody else enough to nail your own child to a tree? If you thought it would work. I, mean, I know that sounds a bit graphic, but we've got to get this. We've got to understand. There's been a lot of bad press out there for our Father in Heaven. And uh, it's frustrating because he's done everything to reach out to humanity. Jesus has done everything to reach out to us. Everything is fully available to us. Like I said a little bit earlier on the broadcast, that we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. What does that mean, friend? I was saying this last night on the program. But you, my dear friend, you've got to get into the word of God as well. I can pray for you. Uh, others can pray for you and the power of God can come and you can fall on the floor uh, and, and all kinds of things can happen to you. And that's great. And we want that as well. But we need the power. We need the power of the word of God and the truth of God in our heart and our spirit as well. I've been speaking the Bible to you all the time I've been on the program. Just because I'm not saying chapter and verse of everything I'm saying does not mean if you know anything about the Bible, you know that the numbers weren't actually in there when it was written. You don't, you don't number every line of a letter when you write it to people. Line, number t line two, line three, line four. Oh, hey, you just write. Uh, and that's what um, Paul's letters were. They were letters. Epistles means letters. And he wrote letters telling, expounding the truths of what he'd received in heaven when he was taught the gospel by Jesus. I once asked Jesus, I said... I was praying one day and I said to the Lord, I said, look, I just love reading about what happened to the Apostle Paul. And he says, I know a man in Christ, 2 Corinthians 12, I know a man in Christ who was caught up to heaven, caught up to paradise, and I saw things inexpressible that are not even lawful to mention. And in other parts of his letters, Paul says, no man taught me this gospel, but rather I received it by revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember the story of Acts 9 when Saul was knocked off his donkey just outside uh, Damascus, Syria? He was blinded for three days and Jesus taught him that gospel. Jesus showed him, called him up to heaven, showed him the gospel, whether it was then or a bit later, I don't know, totally. But Well, the point I want to make to you is this. When I... Um, when I... Um, was asking the Lord about this stuff, about the, the revelation of Paul. He said this to me. He said, the revelation is in the writings. The revelation is in the writings. So if you will look into Paul's epistles, it will begin to connect you to the revelation that he received in heaven about the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Lord told me that directly. The revelation is in the writings. The revelation is in the writings, in the scripture, in the Bible. Now you're wanting to look a little bit more into the New Testament, I think. Because you're thinking the revelation's in the writings. He got caught up to heaven. God showed him some stuff. Oh, hallelujah. But don't you know, all of the scripture has come out of revelation. All of the word of God has come about, as the Bible says, that men of old were moved by the Holy Spirit and then they wrote down the scriptures, the lively oracles of God, the living word of God. Hallelujah. And, and you know, in John chapter 1, Jesus is the word. The word made flesh. Oh, glory. <laughs> the word made flesh. Look at the Old Testament. 
And look at the um, the Tanakh, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. Look at that, the Torah. Look at the, the Tanakh is the whole Old, Old Testament, sorry. The, the, the Torah, the law. How did that come? Moses got it by direct revelation on Mount Sinai, even given tablets of stone written on by the finger of God himself. Man alive. So when you're reading stuff in the Old Testament, that was given directly by God to Mo Moses on Mount Sinai, written by the finger of God. 40 days, 40 nights being bathed in revelation from God. That gives you more of an in impetus and desire to read some of that stuff, doesn't it? You can connect. God poured it into the prophets and they wrote it down. Now you begin to see that this isn't, this isn't some history book. This is a book connected, as Sir Aaron's put it, the Bible is a living book. It's connected to the very throne of God and the revelation of God and the person of God himself. And as we begin to speak the word of God, as we begin to teach and preach the word of God, as we begin to share the word of God, the spirit of God himself, now resident on the earth, he comes to confirm that word to humanity. Give him something to work with. Start sharing the word. You don't necessarily have to quote chapter and verse, but share the truth of what's contained within it. And the spirit of God will come and confirm that word. I've done it thousands of times. Got up, began to speak, and the power of God has come. Because I shared the truth about Jesus. I shared the truth from the word of God, of, of some other part of the word of God. And the power of God comes. The Holy Spirit comes and impacts people, illuminates people, heals people, delivers them, sets them free. Oh, that we would understand the power of the Word of God. The power to change whole nations. The power to change history itself. It's contained within that book. Because when you release what's in that book, you release heaven into the earth. You release dynamic, mighty power into the situation. Amen. Oh, I pray there's a hunger growing with inside of you for the word of God. Growing to know Jesus. Oh, Malalabashiko. I'm going to read you something now. After saying all of that, I'm going to read you something now from the Bible, from the word of God. Oh, I'd love this bit of scripture. This bit of the Bible absolutely blows my mind. It's just totally awesome. And I pray that more and more that God would help me to understand this. Turn in your Bible if you've got it or just listen to Revelation chapter 1 or as the title truly says, it's probably backwards to you, the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, Paul, uh, um, John on the island of Patmos, the Apostle John on the island of Patmos, he had a revelation of Jesus. So people often say, oh, it's the book of revelations. Well, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what it is. And um, it's very windy here. I could do the elastic band, really. But anyway, hold me Bible steady. But however... Oh, man, a light is blowing around crazy here. But listen to this. Uh, revelation chapter 1 verse 1 says this. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. You see, this was a powerful, powerful supernatural revelation of Jesus Christ given to John. And I pray, there are things that we can do. I'll get back in a second. There's things that we can do, what I call encounter triggers. That can trigger you into an encounter with God. And one of them is reading the word of God. Many times I've had, when I've read the word of God, something powerful has broken forth. And there's something about it, it gets in your heart, it gets in your spirit, and then during the day, the Holy Spirit keeps on talking about things or sharing more thoughts about that. 
because it's living, it's active, it is powerful, sharper than a double-edged sword. But just before we get to that, I'm just going to uh, pour myself a nice cup of tea here. We might as well be mildly civilised when we're out here. Ah, lovely. Drinking tea in church, Chris. You better believe it. <laughs> Never know, I might even eat an ice cream. Um, Right, here we go. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, amen. But I just love this. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, ra -ba 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 Maybe I'll read from verse 9, right? It says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he'd been banished to this island for preaching the gospel. That's why he's there. Right. Now I love this. Verse 10, Revelation 1, verse 10. And it says this, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Capital S, spirit means Holy Spirit. He is in the spirit on the Lord's day. Right. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> All of a sudden a voice speaks to you, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. In Hebrew, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end. Behind you, a thunderous voice. This is, he, an encounter is now triggered. He's now in something here. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. I love reading about the prophets and the people in the Bible and every person that, like Moses and Abraham and, and every person that's encountering God. Don't you find that just awesome? Doesn't it sort of like, whoa. Can you imagine me on a mountain that's burning up on fire and God's there writing on tablets of stone and with his finger in front of you? What does that look like? What's that like to have experienced that? Oh, I want that. Right. <laughs> so, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and last. What you see, write it in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. What you see. So John is going to see something and he's told to write it down. And that's what you've got here. He saw this and wrote it down and you're reading it 2,000 years later. You talk about powerful and enduring. Men have tried to burn this book, ban this book, and they've never been able to get rid of it. He says, in verse 12 anyway, he says, And then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. Oh, Can you imagine being there? And now you're going to turn around and see the voice that's speaking to you. Oh, man, alive. I turned around to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands was one like the Son of Man. Clothed, oh Rabashi Korabashanda, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band or sash. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. Oh, glory! His feet were like fine brass glowing in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, the truth, the word of God. And his countenance, his appearance, his face was like the sun shining in all its strength. 
all its brilliance. And when I saw him, oh, that you and I would see him. When I saw him, I fell down at his feet as though I was dead. And he laid his right hand on me saying, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to come to Jesus, friend. Oh, I feel his presence on me right now. Oh, glory. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives. And I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Death and hell. He said, oh, I mean, that is just so powerful. John seeing the resurrected son of the living God, Jesus Christ, in all his glory. And he falls down like a dead man on the floor. He's so awed by the presence. Do you remember what happened to Saul of Tarsus when he saw the risen Christ outside of Damascus? He fell like a dead man on the floor, blinded by what he'd seen. And John is lying on the floor under the power of God. He's lying there awed by he that is the first and the last, the living one, he that was dead but rose again and lives forevermore. And Jesus turns to him, puts his hand upon him and says, do not be afraid. Oh, glory. I pray that you would see him today, the glorious son of the living God. Resurrected. Oh, Rabba Sanda, Rabba Rabba Sanda. The Bible tells me that he resur resurrected up into heaven to sit down at the glory of the majesty on high. What? The right hand of God the Father. What does that look like today, friend? I pray that something's happening to you. A revelation's coming to you of the power of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the resurrected King of glory, whose name is above every other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess to the glory of God the Father. Do you know today that that power of that name has been delegated to the body of Christ to release in the earth? When you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're not just telling some dusty story about a dead man who died on a cross. You're telling the story about he whose face shining brighter than the sun resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I feel the fire of God here. I only wish that there was a million people stood in front of me hearing this message. Because I tell you, set you free, break you through in an incredible life with God. Healing will come, revelation will come, breakthrough will come. See him, the glorious son of God, risen from the dead. But the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells within you. Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. But you see, friends, preach Jesus. Preach the risen Christ. Bring him before the people. And I tell you what, the Spirit of God will come with mighty power. Mighty power. And confirm the word of God. So I say to you today, truly, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. Touch your people, Lord, I pray. Breakthrough today, healing today, deliverance today. 
Uh, revelation come in Jesus name touch your people loose your fire upon your people I pray I preach your word today Lord confirm your word with signs wonders and miracles let the fire of God erupt right where you are fill them Lord fill their bodies fill their hearts fill their minds with your love with your grace and your power anoint them to preach your word, to share the truth about Jesus, to preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Oh! Shanda na ba 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 shanda. Touch them, Lord, wherever they are around the world. Lord, I pray for a great breakthrough in the nations of the world. Let your almighty gospel prevail. Your revival come. The breakthrough come. Lord, signs, wonders and miracles. Salvation, healing, deliverance, discipleship. Hit the church. Hit the people of the world. Open our eyes to the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. To the revelation that he who was once dead is alive. And he says, behold, behold, I live forevermore. Fill them, Lord. Touch your people today. Whether you're watching me uh, live or on the recording, I pray for you, my dear friend, that the power of Almighty God will touch your life. I want to pray for every person watching me today that's in the continent of Africa in the name of Jesus because that's just on my spirit. Man, right now, may the fire and the power of God come upon you to preach the gospel like never before. As uh, the great evangelist Reinhard Bonker said in a vision he received from God, Africa shall be saved. Africa shall be saved. And he saw a great vision of a blood-washed Africa as the gospel began to prevail throughout Africa. You're watching me today from that continent. I pray for you, my dear brother, my dear sister, that the fire and the power and the glory of God will fill you to overflowing. Out of your belly shall indeed flow rivers of living water. Oh, you're anointed by God. Go forth. Go forth in Jesus' name. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing all around the world at this time. You know, friends, you ought to got to know, around the world, the gospel is breaking forth all around the world. Miracles are happening. Lives are being transformed by the power of this gospel that we have, this great gospel. And we've got the ability to get this word out now more than any other generation. We've got things like this that can broadcast around the world. Any of us can broadcast the gospel if we've got a phone and an internet signal now. Any of us, anywhere, can share about Jesus. We can flood the airwaves with the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world, with the word of God. And we talk today so much about the power of the word of God. Be filled, be encouraged in your spirit, man, today. Oh, glory. Touch your people, Lord. Reveal to them the truths, just like you revealed to John on that day on the island of Patmos. See, when you read testimony, because really that's John's testimony of what he received, when you, re when you read testimony, God is preparing to set it up to happen again. You could be receiving a revelation just like John today. Many people around the world are having wonderful encounters with God, revelations from God. And it's setting them ablaze. 
I remember when I had a mighty encounter with God. I've had more than one actually, but changed my life. Utterly changed my life. And uh, maybe I'll do a program another day and really go into that as well, because it'll bless you. Amen. Uh, and he wants to anoint you, fill you with his love, his grace, his healing, his power, set you ablaze. Because friends, this gospel works. I never forget when I led my brother to the Lord on his deathbed. He had a massive stroke, a brain aneurysm, big bleed inside his head. My brother never even had the power of speech. Um, he was brain stem dead, lying in a hospital bed. The doctors, the nurses, nobody could get anything out of him. They were getting long needles and poking him under his toenail, in his toe sort of thing, to try and elicit a reaction. Nothing. But then I went in that room with my wife, who was eight months pregnant with our son at the time, nearly, nearly due to give birth. And it was an open ward, intensive care unit in the Hampstead Hospital in London. I went in there <clears throat> and the staff just wouldn't go away. Wouldn't I thought, right, I'm going to preach the gospel to my brother, whether you like it or not. This is an emergency. He's on his deathbed. He needs Jesus. My brother's laying there, brain stem dead, massive brain damage. The only thing keeping him alive is a machine pumping his heart and lungs. He cannot speak. He cannot move. Nothing. And all of a sudden I began to pray. Because I thought, well, your spirit's in your body. You can hear what I'm saying. And I prayed for my brother. I called upon the power of God in that hospital room. The power of God came down. Hit him on that hospital bed, right? My wife got blown backwards, then he fell to the ground under the power of God. And my brother began to sit up on the hospital bed. And he began to move and he began to try and speak. He was going... But he didn't have the power of speech. But I knew that he could hear me. I said, Sean, I know you can hear me. And I said, you know, I wouldn't lie to you at a time like this. But my brother, you need to accept Jesus Christ. If you want to go into heaven, you must accept Jesus, Sean. So I preached the gospel to my brother in that situation. Remember, doctors could get no reaction from him. My, even my mother, nobody could get anything from it. It's only when I prayed, God gave him back to me enough so I could preach the gospel before he took him to be with him. Greatest miracle is salvation. Never forget that. Anyway, I preached the gospel and I said, Sean, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your saviour, I said, squeeze my hand twice. Remember, he couldn't move. He couldn't do anything. Boom, boom. He squeezed my hand. And I said, Sean, do it again. Boom, boom. He done it again. And I know what disbelieving, unbelieving, vileness people have got at times. And they'll go, oh yes, it was a nervous reaction. It was this, it was that. I said, Sean, do it again. Boom, boom. Three times he did it on command. Exactly how I asked. And I led my brother to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was on the brink of death. He had no power of speech, nothing. He accepted Jesus Christ on the brink of death. Boom, boom. And I tell you what, it's never too late. God can do it. He can break through in your situation, in your family, with your relative. Amen. And not only that, you never know what is happening in the heart of a person. Share the word with them. Even if you're not even sure if they can hear you, tell them their spirit man can hear they're inside that body. That spirit can hear all the time. It may not be able to communicate to you. 
Their body might be broken, but the spirit hears. The soul is hearing. Speak the word and the power of God will come and transform them and bring them salvation, healing and deliverance. Show them the life. Now, my brother, he wasn't healed. He didn't. And, and a bit later on after that, he passed away. But he's gone to be with Jesus. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I know my brother's in heaven. I was there when he accepted Jesus Christ. And the Lord decided to take him on home. And my brother, um, who like me, was adopted and he'd been through many trials in his life. Had a lot of pain in his heart. He'd also lost his four-year-old daughter. My niece uh, tragically died as well of cancer. Um, and so he'd been through a lot and I think the Lord just thought, you know what, I'm going to bring him with me. He's mine now. I'm going to, I'm going to bring him to me and rest with me. Amen. So I'll see Sean again one day. But Jesus rescued him. Amen. You see that there's power in the gospel. Incredible testimony. True story. My wife was there with me, Bridget. She can confirm this story to you. So could probably some doctors and nurses if I knew what they were. Because they are there. After that time, nobody ever got anything out of Sean again. No reaction, nothing. After I left, there was no communication ever again. Isn't that wonderful, though, how Jesus came in there? Isn't that wonderful how he, how he, he rescued him? So I want to say this to you, you know. Uh, uh, all right, maybe you want to hear another story. Okay. Um, three years ago, on my wedding anniversary, my mother had a massive heart attack. Collapsed with my father. We were just going off to do something for our, our anniversary, my wife and I. And my mother had a massive heart attack, right? By the time the paramedics got there, the time we drove back from where we were, because we'd seen her that morning, and she was a bit groggy in bed and all that kind of thing, I popped in on my anniversary to, to collect a card she had for us. And I said to my dad, I said, Dad, I said, Mum's not good, there's something not right. He goes, oh, well, she's always a bit groggy in the morning. I said, no, I think it's more than that today, Dad. But anyway... Uh, we left because she sometimes was like that in the morning and needed time to come round because of her medical conditions. We get this phone call. Mum's collapsed. She's had a heart attack. We race back to the house. I get there just before the paramedics are carrying her out of the house. But basically they said, really, she's got an extremely weak pulse. They said she's gone, really. We've managed to kind of hang on to her, but there's nothing happening here. They put her in the back of the ambulance. I jumped in the ambulance with my mother. My father was just completely distressed. He, he couldn't cope. He, didn't, he couldn't go in the ambulance. And that they always would send me to anything like that. And, um, and so I jumped in the ambulance. I started riding along with my mother. I lifted up the blanket, slipped my hand underneath and put my hand upon her leg. And, and I began to, on a, upon her foot, really. And I began to pray for her. We were going 90 miles an hour to the hospital in, on Newport on the Isle of Wight. Blue lights fl flashing, sirens blaring. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We are, it's blazing up the road to the hospital. It, it, it couldn't be any more emergency situation. Screeched into the hospital and they rushed to get her into the hospital. And then they kicked me out. They said, oh, can you go and book her in? I thought, book her in. You're just trying to get rid of me. But anyway, so I had to go in. And eventually they let me in. Then they take me and they put me in this relative's room. Because they've been in there and they've been doing all this stuff, trying to get her back to life and everything else, and there's nothing really happening. And then the consultant called Tom comes into me and he says, he says, hi, he says, hello, Mr. Cass. And I said, hi. He said, well, I'm afraid it's not really very good news. I said, I know. I know. He's, he, said, he said, I think maybe she'll last five minutes more, maybe. He said, but not much. He said, she's, there's virtually no pulse at all. She's there. Anyway, 
I told the people that my mum has always, has always said as well, if this ever happens, she does not want you to do heroics and try and uh, revive her. She'd been through terrible suffering and agony in her life, had kidney transplants, spinal surgery, all kinds of traumatic and painful things throughout her life. She'd had enough. She was 76. I didn't think she would live beyond 50, I don't think. And um, many times God raised her up and did incredible things. And so, anyway, I'm, I, I end up having an argument with the anaesthetist person who was saying, well, I think we, have you got that in writing? She don't, I said, I'm telling you now, my mother does not want you to resuscitate her. And if you do, you're going against her wishes. Like they said, there was an argument with this anaesthetist person, this woman. And, uh, and they were sort of saying, oh, you're going to have to be out. And then the consultant turns around, he said, no, I'm telling you what, he said, all of you, Get out and leave Mr. Cass with his mother. And he kicked them all out. <laughs> right? So they all got thrown away. And I was there later. And then they, they put the curtain round. I said, I'd like to pray with my mother. I said, I'd like some privacy, please. As is my custom. <laughs> and I laid hands on my mum and I began to pray. They thought she's going to be dead in, in, in any moment. I prayed for her. Power of God came into her body. And all of a sudden she began breathing deeply she went pink my mother's there lying on this bed virtually dead they've taken away all help she's got no breathing apparatus nothing else everything's been removed basically to let her slip away right well i prayed for her because i thought she can't go yet dad needs to see her and he needs to see her in peace before she goes away not collapsed into his arms having a heart attack Anyway, so I pray for my mum. Power of God comes upon her. Lying there in St Mary's Hospital on the Isle of Wight um, three years ago. And then the consultant comes in, expecting to find her dead and me grieving and crying over or something like this. And he came in, right? And he looked at her. He looked at me. He looked at her. He said, what's going on? I said, oh, I've been praying for her. And he just sort of shook his head. He went, whoa. I he said, that's amazing. This sort of thing is a bit like, whoa, like this. I said, I need to step outside for a minute. I'll be back. Then I went outside. Now, half an hour's gone by now, and nearly an hour, and they said five minutes, right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, uh, sorry, all of a sudden, um, I get outside, I phone my dad, I said, Dad, you need to come to the hospital now. So my wife uh, uh, brought my father to the hospital, and then dad come in to see mum, and I tell you what, see, rather than being left with this image of her croaking and having a heart attack and dying in his arms, now she was lying on a hospital bed, she looked 20 years younger, all the lines had dropped out of her face, she looked completely peaceful, right? And she just looked like a, 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 a middle-aged lady just gently sleeping and resting in perfect peace. She was 76. A seven, uh, 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 was it a 70? Okay, anyway. So she was there and she just looked absolutely peaceful, right? So dad comes in, he sees mum like that and he's holding her hand and kissing her hand and, and, and being with her and all the rest of it. And then you could see him just begin to relax because he could see that mum was at peace, she was okay. Amen. How awesome is that? My mum lasted another eight hours after that, right? And we've been there for so long. I said, Dad, we really need to go and um, get a cup of coffee or something. We've been here. We need to get a bit of refreshment. I said, let's just nip out for a minute. Let's get, we'll come back and see mum again in a minute. Now being mum, <laughs> I know what she's like. So full of love and mercy, my mum. Incredible person. Incredible person. Kindest person I've ever met she was. When they adopted me and she took me as her child, she was so loving. Anyway, we slipped out, went to the hospital cafe to get a cup of coffee for a minute, just to have a bit of a break from all the dramatic events and everything else. And in that period of time, she slipped away. So when we came back, she'd gone to be with Jesus. My mum was a believer. I took her to a meeting when she got saved as well. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Can you stand a bit more? Can you handle another miracle from the next day? Are you ready for the next miracle? 
the next day, we're at my dad's house, and he he's he's at the he's at the kit at the um, not the kitchen, he's in the lounge at the table. There's a lounge diner type thing, and he's at the table. He's got his head in his hands like this. It's the next day after Mum has died. We're making a cup of coffee, and then we go in the lounge, and never guess what? Jesus appeared to my dad. And do you know what he said? He said, Tony, don't worry. My dad's name's Anthony, and we call him Tony. He said, Tony, don't worry. He said, Diane's with me. And he said, and I've got a place for you as well when the time comes. My dad don't go to church. <laughs> he left the Catholic Church for 40 years ago when the priest upset him. But he's at the table. He said, I saw him. I come in, he goes, I saw him. I saw him. I said, what happened, Dad? He said, he said, Jesus was here right at the table. And he's told me, Mum's okay. She's with him and he's got a place for me sometime as well. That's the mercy of God, man. That's the love of God. That's why I believe. Because I've encountered his love. I've encountered his presence. I could tell you many other stories of things I've seen of the miraculous birth of, of, of both my children as well, of the healing of my wife when she was pregnant, when a pair of white hands went inside her and moved all these adhesions out of the way so that my son could drop down and he had room for him to live and grow. That's a big story in and of itself. Complete miracle, medically verified by two consultants. That is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That, my friends, is the power of testimony. You're going to want to share this program with your friends. You're going to write a, write a testimony at the top about some of the, 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 about the power of the name of Jesus that you've heard about and some of the testimonies on that. I don't mind you. Share it wherever you want. But get the word out because people need to know and understand the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that he wants to step in and help us. Amen. Glory to God. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, I could tell you some incredible stories all day long and I'll, I'll share some more on some of the next programs as we come together to build your faith and to give God some glory. Um, there's some things up on YouTube on my channel there, Christopher Cass. There's a great testimony of my wife of how the Lord spared her life when she'd taken an overdose before she was a Christian and sent an angel into a telephone box to rescue her. I mean, he didn't fit in the telephone box. He was going right through it. Huge angel. Rescued my wife. as She'd taken a massive overdose and she'd left the hospital still with the drugs in her in a, in a state. Amen. You can watch that one on YouTube on my channel, Christopher Cass. Amen. Do you want to help me get this word out around the world as well? Do you want to help me? Again, I've got a PayPal thing you can share on that. My wife says, you need to tell people these things. Uh, for years, I never even took offerings and nothing. For years and years and years, nothing. Uh, firstly, nobody would support us. I've seen miracles like this and stuff like that. Nobody would help us. Um, and we just lived on very meagre things. Um, but, 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 but because we weren't in it for money, we're trying to share the truth of Jesus Christ. Trying to help the world with what, what, what God has done in our lives and stuff like that. But if you want to help me in any way, you can. Um, I don't do these telephone programs where people are sort of trying to manipulate people who are giving them money. I hate all that stuff. You know, give me $58 and in 58 days something will happen, all that stuff. That is that's utter nonsense, that stuff. Really, it is. But if you see something that's worth investing in, invest in it. I used to look like giving money to Reinhard Bonker in Africa, the great crusades that were there, because you saw millions of people were giving their lives to Jesus. Blind were getting their sight. Cripples were walking. And every time I gave a little bit of money, I never had much money, but every time I gave some money towards that, I was helping towards that. Anyway. So, but take these testimonies and share them with people. Share this word today with people because it will share people's, it will change people's lives. 
Amen. Are you excited today? I don't know why I am. I'm sat out here in this beautiful field. I mean, you can see the flowers. You can see the sea. I only can't see the sea, actually. Well, the sea is directly over there from me. And that is different colours as well today. Beautiful. The sky is beautiful. Um, I'm sat out here in, in the most incredible place. So beautiful here. Tell you what, I'm happy as a sand boy. I tell you what, love it. <laughs> you got a job to drag me into a dusty old church, I tell you. <laughs> I love being out here. Amen. I like that, Aaron. He says, I smell fresh bread, freshly baked. Glory to God. See, when there's fresh bread in the house, people will come and eat it, won't they? And this is what people want. They want to experience the presence of the Lord. They want to hear the word of God with power. They love to hear testimony. We want to, we want to see lives changed, don't we? We need to see lives changed. And that's what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. Changing people's lives. Amen. Glory to God. Well, what a blessing uh, to be with you all today. You know, love to you all. And it's... um. I'm just pouring another cup of tea because my Tetley tea, as Steve so rightly said, got cold when I was uh, getting in a bit of a flow there. So, uh, you know, the old tea goes out the window then. <sighs> Tetley makes tea bags make tea. <laughs> well, you know what they say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Good to be with you, folks. Look forward to the next time uh, that we're together on a broadcast and to what God will do next. Again, do share it with your friends. Let them know what God is doing. Let this revelation I was preaching on hit the people you know. You want to share it with everyone you know. That preaching earlier, get it to people, okay? Share it with your pastor, with your leader, somebody. Just share, 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 share. And let them hear those testimonies. And it's helpful if you share something to put a little synopsis at the top. Because what it is, there's so much stuff out there that people get bombarded with. If the title doesn't grab them or something like that, oftentimes people think, oh, I don't know, and they just... But if you tell them the stories about people being led to the Lord on their deathbed, and things like this, and all this kind of stuff, it captures people's mind. They're, oh, what's that? And they'll watch it. And then the rest of the stuff can get to them. They can hear the message of Jesus and stuff like that. And we want people to receive of this stuff. Well, God bless you. Take care. Good to be with you. I'll catch you again another time. Bye.